So here we go. So this is the restraining order that uh, the police that the, the police obtained from the Accra High Court. This is where the story begins. And it's instructive to let you know that the protesters are concerned because they believe that they had been hoodwinked. They were invited to the meeting or they, they asked for a meeting. Some meeting of sorts was supposed to occur. They went to the police headquarters according to their story to meet the IGP. Uh, the schedule for the meeting was changed to another place. High-profile ministers, including the Minister for National Security, Minister for Foreign Affairs, the Leonard Attorney General, the Minister for the Interior, and the Minister for Defense were all present at this meeting according to the story of the demonstrators. Now, they held this meeting and the discussions were had as to the routes they wanted to take and all of that. That is common with the, with the compliance to the Public Order Act. That's quite common when you go um, to, to apply the Public Order Act you have these conversations with authorities, usually the police. This one was high profile. And then they got out of the, uh, the meeting sometime towards the close of day around dusk, and they were told that a restraining order, or it was served upon them, that a restraining order had been obtained by the High Court. That's not the end of the story. The real meat of the story is that tonight, lawyers are divided whether this is a legitimate order or whether it's not a legitimate order. Our responsibility here is to show you the order and to show you the point of divergence among barristers in Ghana today. Then you can make your own decision. If we have occasion to open phone lines tonight, you'll be able to speak about that when the phone lines are open. Let's now learn what has happened. If you just got home, grab a uh, sobolo. And join me right here. A lot more coming up on this Good Evening Ghana tonight. Captain Smart is also in the studio. So here it is. It says, upon um, reading the affidavit of Assistant Commissioner of Police, Benjamin Osei Adade of Regional Police Headquarters, Accra, filed on the fifth day of May 2021 in support of the motion ex parte for an order for prohibition against organizers, conveners of the fifth of the fixed the country protest march pursuant to Section 16 of the Public Order Act 1994, Act 491. Upon reading the submission of Frederick Edu Jemfi Esquire and Christabel Selma Anafuri Esquire for the Republic herein, it is hereby ordered that the organizers, conveners of the Fix the Country protest march, their associates, officers, agents, assigns, and workmen be prohibited from embarking on, on any demonstration on Sunday 9th of May 2021 or any other date until the restrictions on public gathering is lifted by the appropriate authorities. Wow. Okay. So this is where the matter is. Now, now I was in the court, but it's believed and it looks quite obvious that the police had been um, had gone to the court to say that a demonstration will violate the Public Order Act, the amendments that were created during COVID. You know that we are still in the COVID crisis and therefore there, there's restrictions on public gathering. That's the law. The so political scientists and the sociologists are talking about something else. They are, there's talk about hypocrisy, there's talk about the double standards, et cetera, et cetera. The argument is that during the elections, politicians and political parties, both from the NDC and the MPP, were able to gather to hold their rallies. What happened to that? There's talk about a demonstration that occurred in the eastern region. What happened to that? So these are the questions some people are raising. But this is the order, uh, the legal uh, format order that had tonight been served on the demonstrators. So after this order was served on the demonstrators, uh, to which of course they disagree, and listening to them on radio on Joy FM this evening, a question was put directly to them that in the circumstances, it's May 9th over and the person who was being interviewed for the demonstrators said that it is not over. We're not so sure whether they are building grounds to disregard uh, this order, but if that's what they are doing, do they have a legal basis to do so as we get along? You see, we took out a post from Facebook by uh, the lawyer Samson, uh, where he was making a point that we'll share with you in a minute. Okay, so after that, uh, after the, the restraining order was served and was published, the police, and this is signed by Ifia Tenge, the deputy superintendent of police at the headquarters uh, public affairs, she signed this one, and it reads as follows. Restraining order against fix the country protest march. It says, the high court under Justice Ruby IET has restrained conveners of the fix the protest fixed the country protest march from embarking on a planned demonstration slated for Sunday, 9th of May 2021, or any other date until the restrictions on public gathering is lifted. The restraining order follows an affidavit filed by the police against convenience of the fixed the country protest march pursuant to Section 16 of the Public Order Act 1994, Act 491. 
The Accra Regional Police Command is hereby drawing the attention of the general public, especially organizers or conveners of the Fix the Country protest march, their associates, officers, agents, assigns, and workmen to the restrictions order and compliance. A copy of the order is hereby attached. Now, this is coming from the Ghana Police Service. Okay, so that's where we are. So where's the confusion? Where's the argument? The argument is that before this time, there was a protest called Let My Votes Count. And when the protesters of the Let My Votes Count, now these were young men and women, most of them belonging to the MPP, who believed that the counting process of the December 22nd election uh, had, had been below par. They went to, on a demonstration, set up an NGO called Let My Vote Count. So they went to court, or the police went to court against them to take a restraining order in similar fashion uh, so that they would not be able to proceed with their march. Uh, at that time, there was no COVID, so the police must have found other reasons uh, for the restraining order. The organizers of the Let My Vote Count felt that no, they couldn't do that. They, they, the police should not be able to do that. I think they filed a countersuit, and in addressing the countersuit, uh, Justice A.J. made the point that as far as the public order is public, uh, what's, it, what's it called again? The uh, Public Order Act. As far as the Public Order Act is concerned, the police should not be allowed to come to court to take a restraining order in an ex parte application. Now, an ex parte application, ex parte is a Latin word. It means without the other party. X, the other party. Not X as in former, but X in Latin without the other party. So an ex parte application means without the other party. So I can go to court with an ex parte application. That is allowed by the court process when uh, the applicant feels that he is impelled one way or the other for something or, or the other. He's, there's some trouble happening to him that he doesn't have enough time to find the other party to come to court, that he has a sufficient heavy weighting prima facie case that the court should hear and grant the order in the meantime so that human rights could be saved, so that property may be saved, all of those things. That's the philosophy behind an ex parte order. So when the police go to court with an ex parte order, the point they are making is that if they don't stop the protest, the demonstration, it will occasion the destruction of public property, the destruction of the public peace one way or the other. Now this judge said that you cannot come to court in a demonstration uh, to, to hold a protest with an ex parte application because it was a view of the judge that the demonstration is an expression of people's human rights. And so if human rights have to be curtailed, it shouldn't be done ex parte. It should be done on notice. On notice means that a writ is filed at the court. The demonstrators are told that a writ has been filed against you. Bring your arguments. These are the arguments that's been made against you, but do bring your arguments as well. And then a date is set for both parties to come to court. The judge is there, he hears both parties, and then he can come to a conclusion. That's what a, a, an order or notice would offer. But an ex parte order would offer and give the situation where the police can go by themselves, tell the court what they told them today, and obtain a restraining order. So this judge felt that as far as the Public Order Act is concerned, the police should not be allowed to go to court to take an ex parte order. Now that then becomes the law. That means that in future the police cannot go to court there with an ex parte application to take a restraining order. So let's see the details of what was said. Okay, now this, uh, we, are, we are taking this from uh, Samson Ladi's Facebook post, but we by and large know that the facts are correct. There's a bit of typo in there, but uh, forgive us, we'll deal with it. He said, in that case, said Dennis Ajay, who was a judge that we are talking about, uh, made a great deal of sound law, including a declaration that, and this is a quote, any action which is initiated ex parte under the Public Order Act is void as it is filed contrary to law and procedure and will constitute a breach of the rules of natural justice. That's very strong. That's very, very strong. Okay. It will be unfair to use an ex parte application to initiate an action whose outcome would affect the rights of other people, and once it is granted, the action terminates. Such a crude approach should not be encouraged in a democratic society, as the police in their ex parte application may depose to false information which may persuade the court to grant the application. That's, that's very interesting, very, very strong, isn't it? That's what said, Dennis, said Dennis A.J. is the one who's speaking in that, in that situation. I, I don't know whether I agree with him in the end where he's alleging that the police may depose to false information. I think that 
if we are building a democracy, the police are an important institution of state. We have to give them the rights to be, we have to give them the right for us to believe them. We have to give them the prima facie. If the police speak, we have to believe it. We shouldn't suspect that the police will give false information. It's, it's quite unfortunate in there, but nonetheless, that's the ruling. Let me read it again. It says, uh, any action from the second line, any action which is initiated ex parte under the Public Order Act is void as it is filed contrary to law and procedure and will constitute a breach of the rules of natural justice. It will therefore be unfair to use an ex parte application to initiate an action whose outcome would affect the rights of other people and once it is granted, the action terminates. Such a crude approach should not be encouraged in a democratic society as the police in their ex parte application may depose to false information which may persuade the courts to grant the application. That's, that's very interesting, isn't it? Okay, so where are we right now? So where we are right now is that our suspicion is that tomorrow, Friday, the matter will be brought on notice. That's what we suspect. We suspect that tomorrow the matter will be brought on notice. We suspect that perhaps the court may invite the attorney general into the case as an interested party and, uh, and the case will be held. And when the case is held, we don't know where it will go. But the police are going to urge upon the court that COVID restrictions are still in place. The demonstrators are going to urge upon the court that other people have done their demonstrations. If the demonstrators so urge, that will be a weak argument. If they so urge that other people have done demonstrations like the political parties during the rallies and other things, if they urge that upon the court, that will be weak. They would have to find some sufficient legal grounds. At least they have justice up our way. It talks about natural justice. They will have to go to the Constitution and emphasize the human rights and the right to demonstrate. They will have to look at the, the philosophy behind the Public Order Act, etc., etc. But I, I guess it's, it's going to be probably very difficult to override the COVID argument. But I don't know what will happen in the court. My suspicion is that tomorrow there will be a hearing. Later by Monday, there will be a hearing on notice. Um, that's our prediction. We don't know what we are forecasting. We are forecasting what will happen in the courts tomorrow or on Monday. So that's our take on the, on the latest as we walk into the studio. It wasn't originally part of our plan, but as we walk into the studio, that's our latest.